Today we've got something new. This isn't going to be a uh, revisit or a, uh, a review of something I haven't played before. Rather, we're going to be tackling an accessory. At least, uh, accessory is the most apt term I can really think of. It's not really a game, it's an enhancement device. <laughs> action Replay. Uh, action Replay is the closest thing for games of this era. This would be for the GameCube. Uh, I would describe this as modding. At least that's that's like the term that makes the most sense when trying to describe what this thing does. Uh, so modern games on PC at least and so on console, uh, you can mod them. That is to augment, change things. Simple stuff like you want to have infinite money in the game's world or more crazy stuff like you want a game where you can fly if you're not supposed to, or or even crazier stuff than that. It's just you know it's just scratching the surface, and that's kind of what Action Replay does. Now obviously this isn't the case that it came in. It didn't even come in a case back when I bought it. It's like a little plastic container, uh, kind of lame. I made storing it and keeping it in good condition really difficult, uh, but luckily it still works. Now this is the GameCube one. Here's so you can see it there. Uh, it works on the Wii though. This is the latest version that they released. The last one that they did for this generation at least. Uh, uh, and as far as I'm aware, uh, there's nothing that exists for the Generation 8 consoles. This this uh, seemed to have died with the uh, GameCube, PS2, and Xbox uh, era. Nothing else came out afterward. Uh, but simply put, it's a cheat device. This version has preset codes. There were older versions you could add more codes to. That one's way more rare than this one is. Uh, but the benefit to this one is that it works on the Wii, which is great for the sake of capture quality, because the Wii, I can use component and it looks a lot better. So, what I'm gonna do here, is show how Action Replay works, and then go through a bunch of my GameCube games and show what it does. Uh, so we're gonna have some, some fun today. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, so let's get started. Operating the Action Replay is no different than launching any other game on the Wii. You just stick the disc in, it reads it as a GameCube game, and you start it up. The only problem right away is that it does cause the Wii to reset probably one out of every four times that I try to use it. Uh, sometimes more so that we will do like a soft reset and then you try again uh, so that's unfortunate but once you get it working you get to launch into its own little interface which is pretty neat once we get it to successfully launch we find ourselves at the action replay uh, main interface it's like a little app that launches um, there's a lot of things you can do with this, so not just cheating, but it actually supports a freeloader. So if you bought games that are not supported in the region that your system is made for, say from Japan uh, or uh, PAL, like Europe, uh, you can actually put them in the GameCube uh, and launch them successfully with Action Replay. I've never tried it before, but it's definitely cool that it's there. As far as cheats go, we find ourselves looking at a giant list of like pretty much every GameCube game ever made. And what we can do is we can select one and then choose the uh, cheats, the codes. Every game has a list of codes. There is no consistency. Some can have the usual stuff you'd expect, like infinite money or fast leveling up, whatever. Um, but some will have really weird stuff, uh, like messing with inventory or other things like that. The best way I can say is that they're pretty custom to whatever the game they are, they are about. So like Animal Crossing gives us the usual stuff like infinite money or fast house upgrades, but you also have other things that mess with the inventory system, allowing you to spawn in with certain items in your inventory, have song unlocked, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Every game's a little unique. Some will have more than others too. I would say the games like Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and the Metroid series definitely have like the most codes. Some will have like one or two uh, that aren't even like really even useful. Like Super Smash Bros. Melee only has a code for getting all the trophies unlocked like nothing else uh, so they're not consistent but what we're going to do is we're going to go through these i'll start with metroid prime i feel like that's a good one to start with uh, we can start the game off uh, essentially with every single upgrade in the game just right at the beginning which if you know anything about metroid it's all about exploring finding items one at a time using the new thing you just got to get to another new area and get another new thing and then you go from there so we can use action replay to just start the game off with everything unlocked let's check it out all right, I'm going to go down the list here for Metroid Prime. We're just going to turn on basically everything. I'm not going to do 
uh, anything like really ridiculous like the moon jump for whatnot. I feel like that's going to be a problem, uh, but we will do fun stuff like that later on. Uh, but we're going to start off the game with all of the primary weapons and upgrades, which will definitely give us uh, an immediate advantage uh, against all the enemies. You'll see a code meter at the bottom filling up. I think that has to do with how much like launch or free memory that the system has when it boots up. So maybe like you can't exceed what the console can accept. Uh, but we put them all in, and now it's time to actually uh, initiate. So we have to take out the action replay disc and then put in the disc that we're going to be cheating with. You have to do this somewhat quickly, in my experience. If you don't, it actually won't launch. Although sometimes it won't launch anyway, it just depends. Uh, but I got it to work here, so now we go into the game and we can start messing around with this. As we start the game off in the first area right away, here's all of our new weapons. Got the plasma beam on the tutorial level, that's definitely fun. Uh, looking forward to messing with this, because uh, the cool thing about Metroid is all this stuff's gonna work, even though, like, the enemies that exist in this point of the game, they don't know... Like, you only ever have the regular power beam and missiles, you know, you never intended to be here. But it is kind of cool, though, like, it does kind of work. It's like, I'm looking around and, like, the asteroids have, like, an effect with the thermal and x-ray visor. Like, it's, it's pretty cool how, like, the whole game is got this consistent programming thing. I would have just assumed that stuff like that wouldn't have functioned at this point in the game, because those items are never intended to be in your possession at this at this part. Uh, but hey, pretty sweet. Let's see how fast I can beat the Parasite Queen if I have the full arsenal of the endgame on my side here. Let's get it done. Huh. The ice spreader power combo thing didn't actually do anything? Uh, the health bar isn't revealed yet because I didn't reveal it. Oh, there it is. Well, the flamethrower is consistent. Didn't kill it that fast, though. I'm a little surprised. Still still going. Come on. Come on. There we go. I was expecting a bit more of a speed run out of it, but... Uh, I know that you can do like a rapid-fire missile thing that actually would have been faster, so... In this instance, cheats aren't helping me too much. Uh, but <laughs> it's still fun. Now we gotta escape. I will say getting through these hallways with the boost ball uh, is definitely a lot quicker, that's for sure. Uh, the morph ball was always like the fastest way to get through, but that's a lot better with the boost ball, that's for sure. Yeah, we're setting records here. Now here, I've had this happen before, so at this point this little cutscene plays out, Samus gets blasted back by a huge explosion and the various suit malfunctions and you get you lose all your power-ups basically. You, not, not that you're supposed to have much to begin with, you only have the charge beam, missiles and morph ball and bombs, nothing, nothing significant. But sometimes when I've done this, it's actually removed everything. For some reason here though it didn't, I still have all of the uh, items I cheated with, uh, but I am currently wearing the power suit. Um, however, I morph ball, and it's the gravity suit morph ball, so <laughs> I don't think the game knows what's going on right now. Now that I'm on the planet, I can browse through the uh, logbook, and yeah, I can confirm that the game thinks that I'm wearing the power suit, but the morph ball is definitely the gravity suit version. I got the infinite morph ball bombs there. <laughs> Fun. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on with that, but... That's what you can expect when you're uh, messing around with games and, and augmenting them. But I'm curious. I wonder if the effects of the other suits uh, are active. Because if it thinks I'm wearing the power suit, that means that I wouldn't be immune to high temperature and I can't move around underwater freely. Uh, also have a thousand missiles. That's probably enough to get the job done here. But let's see if I can move around freely in water. Oh, but first, let's see what we can blast these guys away with. Ice spreader! Oh, okay, I got one. <laughs> I've never done that before with the aeronautic pirate or whatever it's called. Oh, man. Froze him in place, he was flying. Let's see if uh, we can go in the water, though. Still have the grappling beam, all the good stuff. Uh, yeah. So, wearing the power suit, but technically wearing everything. Awesome. So, action replay definitely makes Metroid Prime more fun, and despite what should be a whole bunch of instability, it seems to be running very smoothly. Uh, no problems or glitches or anything, so that's a good first start. 
let's move on to other games. So, now that we have an established understanding on how action replay works, uh, we're gonna get a little more crazy with it. So Metroid Prime, you know, we did all the items and, and like infinite morph ball bombs, nothing, nothing too crazy, uh, and it worked. We did have the power armor gravity suit thing, but not a big deal. It didn't cause any crashes or soft locks. We're fine. Now we're gonna start to push it. So I think the next game to go over is actually one that I used Action Replay a lot on uh, back when I had this when it was like out for the first time, and that is Mario Kart Double Dash. There is a lot we can do with this one, so let's get into it. We're gonna do a couple things with Mario Kart Double Dash, the first of which is a combination of extra speed, unrestricted kart selection, and purely random items. I'm also gonna do the D-pad left for star one. I don't normally do cheats like that, uh, but since we're doing this little uh, revisit, I might as well try some new stuff out. But this combination of cheats makes for a pretty chaotic uh, Mario Kart experience. Now we can pick any character on any cart, so let's pick two regular characters, uh, Luigi and Waluigi here, and let's put them on a tiny cart. I'm sure it'll work out fine. I don't see any problems if you don't. It looks natural to me. Luigi no it's not natural. It's not good. I don't like. I don't like you. Get off the screen. Get off the screen, Lee, right now. I picked the mushroom cup because we get to baby park here, uh, and this is where it all kind of comes together with this particular cheat. I mean, items are gonna be flying in every direction. First place shell, lightning bolts. Triple turtle shells are coming from everywhere because when you have purely random items, it also includes the special stuff. Because every character in this game can get special items. Like just there, I got the triple red shells, which are unique to the Koopas, and the chain chomp, which is supposed to be unique to the babies. So, any position, any item, makes for one of the most entertaining Mario Kart experiences you'll ever have. Now, the problem with the extra speed cheat is that you're always maxed out, and when you get uh, a star, or a mushroom, or any kind of boost like that, you actually lose speed. Uh, so, you ironically don't want to get those boost items because you don't go as fast. Um, very interesting trade-off, and as I learned here, even though I didn't press the D-pad for the star uh, acquisition, it makes stars last indefinitely, which puts you at a disadvantage since you're going a little bit slower. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I'm cheating, so what can I expect? It's not always going to work out. Uh, but it is an interesting side effect of using these cheats. All in all, though, purely random items alone makes for a fantastic Mario Kart experience that I can't recommend enough if you can try this out. Uh, it's so great. For our next foray into Mario Kart here, we're going to allow only a single item to spawn. And that is the blue shell. So, no matter what position you're in, the only item you can possibly roll for is the spiny first place shell. Hmm, only spiny shells. Ooh, I'm sure this won't go wrong immediately out of the gate. Nope, there's the first volley. They don't even hesitate. No regard for friendly fire. <laughs> the CPU uh, characters will fire that thing as soon as they're holding it in their hand, regardless of what position they are actually in. If they're in first place and they get the spiny shell, they will throw it at themselves. They just, they just launch it. I mean, look at this nonsense. Like four in a row, like <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's dude, I love it. Now, since only one blue shell is allowed to spawn at a given time, that means that if you get it, you can just hold on to it. There's no reason not to. 
uh, and that means that you're you're holding the uh, insurance against being passed, so no one would possibly dare to pass you. At least a human opponent wouldn't. They'd be too frightened to get blown up immediately, or they'd try to just get right next to you. So if you play this with uh, friends, it is a fun mode to mess around with, but I recommend setting up some kind of ground rule where if you get it, you gotta throw it, no matter what place you're in, because there's a chance you won't get it, since only one can spawn at a time. Uh, but still, another fun mode to play around with for sure. Uh, I should have known, action replay is too much for a single episode. So we will continue this on part two of revisiting action replay. Uh, to give you an idea of what we're looking forward to, just... Majesty, it looks so good and natural. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get nuts next time, that's for sure. Star Fox Adventures, Kirby's Air Ride, F Zero GX, Animal Crossing. We're gonna get them all. And unlike today, uh, things aren't gonna go as smoothly because I made an effort to pick games that are gonna that I know work with Action Replay to show off what it does and how it works, uh, how you launch it and choose the codes. Uh, now, granted, I didn't show like. Every, every time you see me playing a game, like that involved having the console reset like once or twice and like they would fail to actually initiate the game once the disc thing swap happened. I mean, it happens a lot. Um, probably one every three times. And like when I would load into Mario Kart Double Dash and do purely random items, I would have to, you know, reset the game, put an action replay again, do the only blue spiny shell thing, do the disc swap, it might not work, reset. So I'm not showing that part of it, just bear in mind that it happens, it's not a smooth process. But when I got them to load, everything ran smooth. Smooth. We're going to be getting into uh, some pretty nutty stuff with the games next time around. So I will see you on part two.